Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check two long range VTXs from AKK, the X2 Ultimate and the FX2 Ultimate. In this video I'm going to go through the features, show you how to set them up and in addition I'm also going to measure their temperature using the different output settings. The X2 and the FX2 are basically the same VTX but you can see they look a little bit different. The difference is that on the FX2 all the components are located on top and it makes it stackable in a more convenient way and on the X2 you can see that all the components are here on the bottom and the VTX is on top so you need to decide which one is better for you depending on your build. With both VTXs we're getting an MMCX to an SMA antenna adapter, a 6 pin cable and the instructions manual. In terms of weight the FX2 weighs 9.29 grams and the X2 is a little bit lighter and it weighs 7.12 grams. The dimensions of the FX2 are 36.9 by 36.1 millimeters. Its thickness is about 5.9 millimeters and the distance between the mounting holes is 30 by 30 millimeters. The dimensions of the X2 are 33.6 by 22.1 millimeters and its thickness is about 9.1 millimeters. The AKK Ultimate VTX comes with this six pin connector. The right pin is the smart audio, then the plus 5 volts for the camera, the ground for the camera, video in, ground and the walk-in voltage is between 7 to 26 volts so you can use it with type of batteries between 2 to 6 cells. Over here we can find a microphone, then this button that will enable you to configure the VTX. I highly recommend to use the smart audio but in this video I'm going to show you how both works. An MM6 connector for the antenna and finally over here we can find this LED indicator that will tell you the current channel, band and output strength. The VTX supports 37 channels, it used to support 40 but they had to disable 3 of them to comply with regulations of some countries and finally the highlight of this VTX that it supports 1200mV so this is the strongest VTX I've seen so far in addition it supports 600, 200 and 25mV so now let's power it up if you use this button short pressing it is going to change the channel can toggle between the 1, 2, 3 and you can see now it's skipped 4 because band is selected and they disabled this channel. Long pressing this button for about 2 seconds is going to switch between all the available bands. So you can switch between A, B, E, F and R. And finally long pressing this button for 4 seconds is going to let you to choose between the output strength. One stands for 25 milliwatts, then 200 milliwatts. 600 milliwatts and finally 4 stands for 1200 milliwatts. Now using my thermometer I'm going to check how hot the VTX gets. So let's start with 25 milliwatts. I'm going to let it run for one minute and then I'm going to measure its temperature. So after one minute the temperature of the VTX using 25 milliwatts is about 34.7 degrees Celsius which is 94.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's change it to 200 milliwatts. And now I'm going to wait for another minute. Now the temperature is 44.7 degrees Celsius, which is 112.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's switch to 600 millivolts. Now the temperature is 54.8 degrees Celsius, which is 130.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, let's switch to the 1200 millivolts settings. It's getting too hot to hold, but now we'll see how hot it will get because it's pretty interesting. And on the high settings, the temperature is about 47.9 degrees Celsius, which are 118.2 Fahrenheit. But actually, I think that the hottest point is on the back of the VTX. You can see it's over here. It's about 60 degrees Celsius. And next to the antenna, it also gets pretty hot. This is the hottest point next to the antenna connector. Over here, it gets, I think I saw 80 degrees Celsius. So this area gets pretty hot so take it into consideration when mounting the VTX that the hottest point is going to be next to the antenna you can see that on the antenna connector it gets to 77.8 up to 81.5 degrees Celsius which is 178.7 degrees Fahrenheit in order to use the smart audio connect the smart audio wire into one of the free UART TX ports I've used TX6 Connect the video wire to the video out and connect the battery connector directly to the battery. Don't connect it to plus 5 volts. Recommend to connect it directly to the battery pads. Then head over to Betaflight, 
and under ports make sure to choose TBS Smart Audio next to the UART that you connected the VTX to. Then hit save and reboot and now you can set up the VTX for the OSD. Just put the throttle to the center, tilt it to the left, tilt the pitch to the top. Now go to features, VTX SA which stands for VTX Smart Audio and now you can set the band, the channel and the power strength. You can see it goes up to 800 so 800 stands for 1200 so let's say right now we want to set it on 200 and we want fetch shock channel 1 hit set confirm and now you can either change the channel or your goggles or you can change the channel for the vtx button finally the most important question is how does this vtx perform outdoors and i'm going to answer it when i'm going to build my long range quadcopter i just finished reviewing this frame and soon in a couple of days i'm going to feature this vtx on the build video and then i'm going to head outdoors and see how it performs as always i thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful if you have any questions about these vtx's from akk feel free to ask it in the comment section down below don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.